Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel. This is a what if series and I'll be doing more down the road. Plus Ultra. Hey guys, and welcome back to what if Luffy ate the girl girl no me. Now, we left off with me not explaining all the fights that happened, maybe because I was just trying to save that for this part. So basically, we're now in the Four Emperors arc. Basically, the last arcs. So, and this is going to be some very interesting things to go over. And I want to, I have put the Awakening in this what if too. So I just wanted to give this like a thank you out to some of y'all. Thank you. I was going to uh, wait till my intro was done because I was basically trying to get an intro made for my channel. But that just basically uh, it's just a lot of stuff going on with that. I was trying to figure out that situation. But anyway, sorry for the delay. But let's just get back right back into where we left off. And I'm basically going to go over all the fights that I just missed in the last part. So anyway, so my, most of Luffy's attacks would basically be not, I, I kept like referring to him as Anaru, like basically Anel, wh wh whichever name you want to call him. But most of his attacks would be in his own way, like a 200 million bolt blast or a, two, a 20 million bolt blast, something like that. Or like, it's just going to be weird. So I, I explain it where uh, y'all understand. Anyway, so let's get back into it. So, when Luffy gets to Whole Cake Island, of course he goes through the normal battles that he's did. But they wouldn't have taxed him as much as in canon. Like, say for example, there are some strong hockey users on there with some strong observational hockey. But Luffy, with his fruit, is basically stronger too. So, in that same way, he didn't have as much struggle as he did in canon trying to fight Cracker. Basically, the fight between him and Cracker was basically, like, easy. Because Cracker, well, with his use of hockey... Hockey, but with the way you Luffy has mastered and uh, the shit that he's done with his fruit, mm, I don't really see Cracker getting as far as to beating Luffy. Now, because even if you got your observation hockey to a point, he still wouldn't be able to block everything that Luffy, because Luffy can create a whole bunch of animals, like animate objects, anything to whatever his mind content, because he has Logia. He could create a hammer or he could create a, a ball or create a ship made of lightning if he so pleased. It's up to his imagination to what he can create. Basically, a green lantern's ring without no ring. You, you just use the powers. I don't think like that well. But, uh, yeah, so that fight with him and Cracker wouldn't really go as well as it should. Well, it wouldn't even go that exciting. So, that's probably why I just went past it. But I just wanted to add detail to it. Anyway, so now we get to the fight. Like, well... Not necessarily a fight. After all that, the battles, Luffy ends up running into Sanji. And they have a very sad encounter with each other. But it would be very, very, well, different. But it probably would have still ended up going the same route that it did. With Sanji hitting Luffy in the face. Even though San the Sanji knows hockey and how to hit Luffy. So, and plus, Luffy wouldn't even hit Sanji. He would just let Sanji hit him. So... With that being said, I think the same things will play out with that. Now, up until that point, everything there, like I told you with the previous parts, that Luffy has got, <laughs> Luffy can like see into the future with his, with, and coupled with the girl, girl, no me, how it gives you that kind of, it enhances your observational hockey, seem like with, um, what's his name, Anaru, whatever you want to call him, well, how it was uh, like, basically magnifying his observational hockey just basically i don't know how to explain that it gave his observational hockey a boost if you will say now with that being said luffy with his observational hockey would be able to like counter people and see their moves before it happens so this could be interesting when he goes to fight katakuri now when luffy first now, this is where I'm going to change a few things up. And it's not going to go the same way as an anime. This is going to be something I wrote down and changed a few things around said order. Because 
Big Mom, now that she knows that Luffy is on her island, she now calls into her reinforcements, meaning that Katakuri comes through his island a whole lot sooner. He gets there a whole lot sooner because now Luffy's on the island and Big Mom views him as a threat because she's heard about Luffy and she's kept her eyes on Luffy. So with that being said, Luffy is basically trying to get Sanji back, trying to figure out what's going on and get information about from everybody he can. And he learns from Sanji's sister that, well, what everything that Sanji's going through. Luffy hears the story and then he goes to find Sanji again. He goes back to that same spot and he wouldn't necessarily have as much trouble as he did in Ganon well when he beat every, each and every one of them. Now, Luffy would just raise his hand in the sky and just shoot lightning at each and every soldier that would have came trying to injure him or hurt him. Now, with that being said, now, when Sanji came back to see where Luffy just sitting by the tree looking, waiting for Sanji to come back, Sanji and Luffy would sit down and talk. And this is where Sanji would explain to Luffy that everything that happens to his family and Luffy would just tell him that he knows he heard from his sister. And Sanji would explain to Luffy that he wants to save them, even though that his family is nothing. Sanji would come out with the truth, not coming up with the three reasons why or nothing like that. Sanji would just break down because Luffy's presence just gives him that kind of warmth in his heart. He feels it and he welcomes it. So, yes, he just tells Luffy flat out that he just wants to come up. He wants to go back to the sunny. He wants to be with Luffy. He wants to be with his crew. So he just, but he can't leave his family behind and Luffy can understand that he wants to help Sanji. So with all that being said, this is where Luffy would first encounter Big Mom. Now, once everything goes the way it does with them trying to coax a plan, Luffy does go to face Big Mom and that fight is, well, uh, climactic. I'm going to let you know that now. From Luffy using giant lightning fists to strike at Big Mom and Big Mom using Prometheus and Zeus to hit Luffy, both of their that battle would be destructive and very like splitting sky almost. Like their hockeys would clash. Like Luffy at this level is probably like like on equal grounds with Big Mom. They're fighting on equal terms. Now, say for example, because if you could say that this first happened with Kaido, but nope. It's reversed. Now this is happening with Big Mom. Luffy's a lot stronger. Now, while they're going toe-to-toe with each other, all of a sudden, Brule comes in and snatches Luffy, well, basically strips Luffy away. Now, Big Mom wonders why Brule got in the way, and then Big Mom smells something. Like, she has this, this huge whiff to her nose, and... This is where she just goes in the direction to where she's smelling that at. And it was all in the plan. Sanji is basically cooking up a cake. And, well, basically he's... Hell, well, you know what it did. Like, basically making a sense. So, to draw Big Mom away. Now, while he's in the... Now, while Luffy is in the mirror dimension... Sorry if I'm all over the place. But while Luffy is in the mirror dimension, he's looking around to saying, Where am I? And all of a sudden, he sees Katakuri. Now, the whole time their fight goes very differently. Katakuri is having, well, not necessarily a hard time trying to fight Luffy. He basically, they're both fighting each other, but Katakuri is on a struggling end at this point. Like, he's really struggling because Luffy can predict way faster than Katakuri is. And Katakuri, well, I'm not going to say like he can predict way faster than Katakuri. I'm just saying that Luffy's... Basically, his observational hockey is getting boosted from his double fruit. So, basically, he's already just one step ahead of Katakuri. And also, basically, he can keep his distance from him, too. So, with that, Katakuri is struggling to fight Luffy. But their battle is more like this with this way. It's more like Luffy is giving Katakuri a hard time. With Katakuri trying to basically get stronger as he fights Luffy. And Luffy is seeing this and he's intrigued by it. He's intrigued by Katakuri's determination. So while their whole battle is going the same way they did in canon with the length, it's the other way around. But Katakuri would not come up on top. He would start to get a, a, a good or very good observational speed on Luffy, well, Luffy. But in the long run, Katakuri would end up like losing when Luffy punches him with a huge lightning fist and he would try to counter it with his own hockey but it then would clash and but when the two fists would clash with each other Luffy would then send more to Katakuri's way and a huge barrage of lightning fists would just hit Katakuri from each direction and then he would be on the ground 
on the ground not being able to move. Oh yeah, and I I'm gonna like start like writing down everything because I noticed that when I wrote this part, I didn't actually say necessarily go into that much detail with that because I didn't I didn't I didn't really feel like much to change. I should have went back and changed some stuff. But anyway, as that per se, like Luffy would leave the mirror dimension and then help out his team with Big Mom and. Most like most of the struggle that they had when they were running from Big Mom, of course, she got the cake and she started eating it. They would manage to get out, like manage to get away from them because Luffy would basically destroy, like put his hand up in the sky and send out a huge lightning strike on each and everything like ship that was surrounding them. And they would manage to get out of Dodge with a coup de burst. Now, with them off of Wano. Okay, of course, every little detail about this. Let's go over every specific detail. Every, like, event that they had, like, with Sanji versus his dad, Sanji would drop his dad. I'm letting you know that now. Sanji with his observational hockey and with Luffy training them over the course of all the adventures that they had, yes. Uh, Sanji versus Judge, it wouldn't happen the same way it did in canon. No matter if you think he's strong or not, Sanji would drop Judge easily, easily with Luffy's training. Now... That part right there, Sanji wouldn't be as weak as he was in Cam. I'm not saying that he was weak, but he would be just stronger due to how strong his captain is. Anyway, so with all that being said, of course the whole Cake Island art didn't just go like with much detail and stuff like that. But that's where I'm going to end it. I'm sorry. I'm going to end it there. I, I was thinking about doing... Uh, an awakening or something like that for this video, but it's not too much farther. You can go with the Guru Guru no me. I mean, of course, you can go down the road of saying something like Luffy has something like the Raijin or the Raijin transformation or something like that. You can go that far as saying something like that, but yeah, I'm gonna say that for something else. Like, say, for example, what if Luffy awakened his double fruit earlier? Hint. Yeah. Anyway, so just, I hope you guys love the series as much as I did. I'm going to end it here because, yeah, the manga, well, the anime is currently in the Wano arc. And, yeah, I'm going to save all that juicy details for later. Anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go with this part. And who knows, I might come back to it and try to rework it or something like that because when I get more used to it. But for now, I'm going to end it here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a good day, a good night, and plus ultra. Good night, guys.